so I think with that, um, we'll get we'll go ahead and get started. And as other you know, if, if other people pop in, they can just um, catch up. Uh, with that. So hello, welcome. Um, today is day three of International Education Week. Uh, thank you for joining our, um, our third webinar of the week, uh, which are looking at internships in Asia, Africa and Latin America. And specifically, our focus today is on business development, social enterprise and communications. Um, so just to let you know, we're going to run through this presentation in about 20, 25 minutes, give enough time at the end to ask any questions. If you have any questions as you go along, please do drop those into the chat and we'll address them uh, probably at the end. Um, likewise, at the end, if you want to just unmute yourself and ask questions, then that would be great as well. Um, we're going to talk a little fast because we have a lot to cram in. Hopefully you can keep up with us. And if not, we will be sending you this recording at the end so you can rewatch that. So without any further ado, um, we'll make a start. So first of all, I just want to introduce you to our Kaya International Education Team um, for the week. So um, speaking right now is myself, Harvick Jones. Um, everyone calls me H, and I am the founder and director of Kaya Responsible Travel. Um, also on the team this week um, is uh, Laura Smith, our program manager. You won't be he hearing from Laura today, but if you joined us earlier in the week, you would have heard from her. Um, uh, joining me presenting today is Emily Tong, our program coordinator that you'll hear from in a minute. And also um, our star this week, Emma Powers, who has been making sure that the technology is running great and that everyone is able to see us. So thank you, Emma. So uh, that's a quick intro to the Kaya team. Um, and just a little bit more about Kaya and who we are and why we're here this week talking about these topics. Um, we were established in 2009, so we've been sending uh, students away on international programs for coming on 12 years at this point. Uh, we are a responsible travel and education abroad organization with a focus on community and environmental development. And we have a mission which is to promote sustainable social, environmental, and economic development, empower communities, and cultivate educated compassionate global citizens through our responsible travel programs. Um, we are very proud that we've won a whole bunch of awards in our time and the one that we're particularly proud of to share with you here is um, a winner of the best volunteer abroad organization. We've won a couple of gold medals and a, a, a few silver and, and bronze in this as well over the years since 2013 and I think that that's a real reflection of our um, ethical commitments towards our communities and also the support that we provide all of our participants. So that's just a little bit about us. Um, we do this through our uh, programs. If you can click on the next slide there for me, Emma. Um, so we're specialists in experiential programs and in cultural um, immersion in non-traditional destinations. Um, I'll speak a little bit about uh, exactly where in a second. Um, but we do those through four types of programs. The first of these are our internship placements. Um, more recently, our virtual, inter um, virtual online remote placements. Um, our study and service, which actually combines a traditional study abroad in the university with placements within the community alongside it. Um, and then our volunteer or service learning placements that are very popular for alternative breaks and also, um, you know, uh, uh, social groups, uh, student groups and that kind of stuff as well. Um, and where do we do this? Um, as you can see by the map here, we actually work across um, and 30 different countries across Asia, Africa, and Latin America. So depending on your um, location of interest, uh, we certainly have a lot to cover here. As you can see, um, uh, we work in, in as I mentioned, non-traditional destinations um, across all of the locations. So we have a lot of variety and options for you to choose from there. Um, and so that was just a quick intro to, to Kaya and how we operate. What I'm going to do now is hand you over to Emily, who's going to speak more specifically about um, the business programs that we are involved with and the kind of things that you in this field can do. So over to you, Emily. All right. Thanks, H. So some majors, especially business, can be quite broad. And an international internship is a great way to try out a concentration and gain practical experience. Business and management skills are central to operating any project, initiative, and organization. With this, an internship in a business sector will provide valuable skills to any future job. To take it further, interning in a non-traditional location and with a small and mighty team allows you to see a complete picture of the business world and the direct impact with the local community. At Kaya, we have more than 250 projects in over 30 countries. And although you might think business internships will have to be at a bank or stuck at a computer, as with all of our programs, you will be getting involved with 
projects that promote sustainability, either politically, economically, socially, or environmentally. So you could be working in the middle of the Amazon, on a mountain in Nepal, or the lively city of Hanoi. So with that, let's take a closer look at some sectors of business from management to event planning and everything in between. So for business management and administration, you can work at the heart of organizations that make an impact and get involved with various business functions involved in running and operating social projects from proposal writing, submitting grants, and sourcing materials. And related to that, at an NGO development, you can learn how to make an, a community assessment, develop a work plan and budget, and implement and then evaluate a community project. Similarly, if you're interested in a social enterprise, you can work within a business with a social purpose, including companies that preserve cultures, provide training jobs and income to disabled groups, or income generation that supports community initiatives. For hospitality and ecotourism, you could live in an incredible location while working at an amazing ecotourism company, like at This Women Run Amazonian Retreat. With supply chain management, you can assist in managing distribution of products to increase small business profits. In the big field of marketing, advertising, and social media planning, you can help an organization's online and social media presence, promote products and services, and work on activities that improve the business's reach. And with website design and management, you could help update websites by developing fresh content, enhance user experience, and boost SEO. And for communications and public relations, you can assist with writing content, community outreach, and forging partnerships, helping an organization with communicating their goals, missions, and activities, and finding opportunities for public relations. And with event planning, you can assist with the intricacies of setting up a full-blown event, including fundraising, promotion, and logistics. For example, the photograph you see here is at the Bushfire Festival in Eswatini, the largest music festival in the country and definitely an intern favorite. And if your interest is in economics or finance, you can get involved with fair trade or microfinance projects, work with small businesses and entrepreneurs on their business plans, or support skills development for income generation in communities. So how can you benefit from a Kaya internship? For business students, an international internship, whether in, in person or virtual, is a great way to gain exposure to the inner workings of a small business. By seeing day-to-day -day operations, you'll be able to find out what direction you will want to delve deeper into. And we only place students at projects where you can make an impact and you're needed and wanted as an intern. Now more than ever during this time when many of our host organizations are strapped for resources and businesses are adapting to shifting capacity, your contribution to the project will make a real difference. You'll learn about the country and culture, develop relationships with colleagues and peers from host country and grow your professional network. Super important as you go forward with your career. And you'll experience different cultural approaches to business. And as the world is getting more interconnected, the ability to bridge cultures is even more important. And this international work experience, tackling a real problem in the world, will really help you stand out on your resume. And if you are joining a virtual internship, you'll develop remote work skills, which really are different from taking online classes like you're probably doing now. And as you can imagine, these skills are increasingly important in the workplace today. Oops. Sorry. There we go. Um, so what does an actual placement look like? First, let's talk about in-person placements. At Kaya, you'll work with one of our placement advisors who will match you to an organization and project that aligns with your academic, professional, and personal interests. By working with you one-on-one, -on -one, we are able to place you with a project that will be challenging and meaningful. Your project will be anywhere between four and 12 weeks, but can be longer if requested. And depending on your schedule and your school's requirements for hours, which we can definitely work with. 
In each of our locations, we have a local site team who will welcome you on arrival, provide your cultural orientation, and support you throughout your time in country. You also have a project supervisor at your host organization to support you in the academic needs. Throughout the program, you'll participate in reflections and at the end, you'll complete our re-entry toolkit to help you process the experience and learn how to leverage it on your resume and in future job interviews. Our accommodation style will be very, very based on location. It might be at a volunteer house, a homestay, or an apartment, and all accommodations are safe and vetted by Kaya. Um, each of our in-person programs have different dates, deadlines, and costs, depending on the location and project. You can search programs and find the, the program specific details on our website. And again, our advisors can work with you to find a match within your budget. So with that, let's take a look at some specific placement examples. And again, these are just a few. So one of our interns, Kelly, worked with a local team at an established foundation in Eswatini and learned about many essential aspects of NGO management, community development, and donor funding. Kelly took on the role of fundraising strategist, planning the process of how to raise funds through the use of social media. She used the internship to explore the field of economics before she chose her major. Next, we have one of our interns, Jacob, who worked at a fair trade NGO that works to promote sustainable production of resources, resources such as tea, while improving the livelihood of Ecuadorian families. While there, Jacob did some market research for the cacao and chocho beans and helped with product development to support the growth of income generating activities. He told us that, his, that this complete experience is something I will never forget. And finally, we have Sophie, who interned as a media and photography intern at, the, at an NGO in Tacloban. This NGO helps the local community through public health efforts, building typhoon resistant housing, programs for women and children empowerment, and so much more. Throughout this internship, Sophie helped make videos to promote these amazing efforts on the NGO's website. She also made videos for workshops and used media materials for grant applications for funding. Sophie said that she had the most amazing time in the Philippines with this program. So I know we're talking a lot about traveling in a strange time. So what does travel actually look like in the time of COVID-19? Kaya anticipates that we will be able to responsibly reopen a number of locations in 2021, which will be done based on careful consideration and planning. We want to make sure the experience is safe and impactful for both you and the local community. During this time, we want to be able to plan, help you plan future travels without risk. So you can speak with a Kaya placement advisor to explore options. We also aren't requiring full payment until we can confirm travel is possible in your preferred location. And the last thing that we want is for intercultural experiences to come to a halt. So in the meantime, we are also offering virtual internships, which may be a good fit for you if you aren't able or ready to travel yet. So with this, I'll pass it back to H, who will tell you more. Thank you, Emily. That's great. So um, as Emily said, uh, at this time, we have been uh, working on virtual uh, remote online internships, lots of different names for it. Um, and this is something that um, is, is ongoing. This, is, uh, this will be something that will be an option going forward as well. Um, it's actually quite similar to our regular internships. We're actually working with exactly the same organizations um, that we have these longstanding relationships with, and we're matching people, skills and interests to uh, the organizations and the projects in exactly the same way. Uh, but the work that's being done on these projects instead of being in person is actually the kind of work that can be done remotely. So things like doing research online um, or you know pulling together documents that the organization can use and that kind of stuff. We're doing this in just five of our locations right now, which are Ecuador, Morocco, South Africa, Thailand, and Vietnam. Um, as I, as I mentioned, the, the placements are very similar, but everybody who is at that country location, we form a cohort of that group um, and then place people individually within the organizations. So our cohort comes together to work on um, some different cultural workshops, which I'll talk a little bit more about, um, and also then works individually on their programs. Uh, and obviously the work similarly uh, to a regular internship would uh, you know, be on, be on um, 
work that is really contributing to the impact of the projects um, and working under a project supervisor um, that's able to evaluate the work that you're, you're putting in as well. Um, so alongside the project supervisor, we then have the, uh, the ground teams um, and the ground teams are running our cultural workshops. These are deep dives into very relevant uh, topics. They're very interactive and fun. And actually they, um, uh, uh, so yeah, interactive and fun. And they um, are covering topics such as um, the culinary, uh, you know, the food that's available in a local country, for example. Um, and we do, uh, um, cooking classes, um, we've had dance classes as part of the culture sessions, um, and also looking at different things. So for example, looking at how the different um, relationship structures uh, look like within a country. Alongside that, we actually have uh, local buddy chats. So this is similar to the experience that you might have speaking to peers when you go into, into the country. They're actually local students from the community, some of them who are also getting credit for uh, forming part of the cultural exchange, um, that are there to talk more um, directly about their experiences as a young person within the culture. So we've had some really fun sessions with that, talking about what does dating look like, for example, or what do they think of their current politics and that kind of stuff as well. Um, and then uh, similarly to a regular internship, we have reflection sessions and our re-entry toolkit. We also have a tool that we're working with that allows you to evaluate your own approach to um, uh, to work and compare that with the cultural approach to work in the country that you're um, uh, that you're interning in. Um, unlike the regular internships, which are more on a rolling basis and available all year round, the virtual internships have a set start um, a set start dates, and we do those in the spring and the fall semesters, and those are thirteen weeks. And we have then the summer semesters, which are eight weeks long. Um, they kind of the same, but in the summer we just condense that a little bit more um, because people are not necessarily doing this alongside their other classes. Whereas in the semester, it means that you can work um, an internship alongside your regular classes back at home. Um, and with that, the amount of time that you spend on your internship can be varied anything from five right up to 30 hours. And if you have some requirements in order for you to get credit, then we'll work within those. So to give you an idea of what um, type of things that people are doing um, on a virtual internship, uh, this is a great example um, of Alexis, who was actually doing a public relations internship in South Africa. This is actually a, a clip directly from her resume that she wrote um, uh, post her program and she talked about how she was involved in creating social media plans for clients, conducting research regarding media titles and social influences, um, and compiling PR tactics to promote clients and their pro uh, products. Uh, she told us that her virtual internship has allowed me to really hone in on my communication skills, to become more independent professionally, and to trust in my capabilities. Uh, another interesting thing about Alexis's experience is that she told us that prior to the virtual internship, she didn't really know much about Africa, or, or to be honest, have much of an interest in it at all. She was The placement itself really appeals to her. Um, and then after conducting the virtual internship at this point, she is so excited to have learned about this country that now she she is hoping to go out and do an in-person internship in South Africa back at the same organization this summer coming. Uh, so again, if there is a location that you had maybe thought that you weren't really sure about traveling to, if you were nervous about travel and stuff, doing a virtual internship is a great way to, to get in there um, and try it out uh, without, without ending up going there. Or you end up, may end up like Alexis where you can't wait to get out there as soon as you can. So uh, just to summarize uh, in virtual internships, unlike the uh, regular internships that are more uh, flexible, the in, because the virtual internships are set, we have a set price um, across all of those, which is always um, 12 85 um, and then there's the option of having a couple of additional items on there. The language classes are very popular, especially Spanish in Ecuador or French and Arabic in Morocco. Um, and also there's the option if you are not able to get home institution credit. Most of our students do get home institution credit for this, but if that's not available at your school, then talk to us about getting transfer credit. Um, we have a US School of Records that we can arrange that for an additional cost um, there as well. Um, as I mentioned, many of our virtual internships are wanting to then actually travel in, uh, in person to either the country they did their virtual internship 
in or actually um, another location and to um, help support that we provide a future program uh, discount for everyone who participates and that can be anything from 100 to 700 dollars depending on where you go and, and, and how we um, work those things together um, but hopefully to help you get out there um, in the end and then um, uh, as you can see here the start dates for spring we have a January and a February start date for spring coming up and we also have a uh, summer placement starting at the end of May and also towards the back end of June as well well. Um, and then just to finish off, we had a couple of um, quotes that we pulled out from some of our more recent virtual interns. Um, Annie, who was um, uh, at Vietnam this last, uh, actually this last summer, uh, she said, I really like my internship so far. There's been a lot of interest in varied work from creating infographics to proofreading documents to captioning and subtitling videos. Um, and Stuart, who was at a social enterprise in South Africa, told us, I think the placement was better than I ever could have found on my own. And it was exactly what I'm uh, looking for. Again, just that project matching to be able to find him the right placement was awesome there. So with all of that, guys, um, you know, how do you go? Where do you go next from here? Um, how, how do you get started on this? So we always recommend that you reach out to our um, uh, placement advising team. They're all very experienced. Most of our um, in fact, all of our placement advisors have lived uh, abroad in one of our locations in the past, and they can give you lots of uh, advice on not just the country, but then also matching you up to the right placement. I also encourage you to visit our website, kayavolunteer.com, where you can get some ideas if you're not quite sure what kind of things that you're interested in, that you can browse all the options that are on there and see what's available. But again, we always bring that back to speaking to the placement advisor because actually we like to customize every single internship to make sure that it really is a good match to you. Once we have an idea of the internship that you're interested in, we encourage you to speak to your study abroad office, your department um, advisor or your um, career center, depending on, uh, especially if you're looking to get credit. Um, but even if you're not looking to get credit, often your school departments can give you a lot of support throughout these programs. So we encourage you to do that. And then if your school does not offer credit, obviously continue the conversation with us and we can work at uh, looking at transfer credit. If you do have documents, um, paperwork, evaluations that you need in order to complete, um, your credit from, from your, your home school um, or um, you know, anything that needs to be filled in or even the way that we set up our internships. Obviously, we work with you to make sure that that's done in order to be able to make sure that you can get the credit as you do these programs as well. If you're not doing this for credit, we have a lot of people also doing it after they uh, graduate and um, are actually just looking to get that experience for their resume as well. So that is an option as well. Okay, guys, so with that, that is um, the, the information we wanted to get to you today. Um, and we left a little bit of time at the end, as I say, for any questions that you might have. So please either type those in or put your hands up um, or unmute yourself and shout out. We don't mind which one um, if you have any questions. And while you're thinking of them, one of the questions that we've had um, this week in one of the previous sessions is people asking us about the language requirements, um, which is a really um, important question. All of our locations, we actually work with English. Um, there are certain placements, especially in Ecuador, where having Spanish language is very beneficial and it might actually open the doors to a few more options for you where a level of Spanish uh, might be required. But pretty much all of our locations are typically um, are working in English in general. In Asia, because all the different Asian countries speak a different language, they tend to have a central business language of English anyway. Um, the African continent is very strongly English speaking. Um, and again, the organizations that we work with usually have somebody who, um, who is that English language speaker as your supervisor. Um, other than those few where we actually identify that you might need a specific language. Very few people, unfortunately, come to us already having spoken, you know, Vietnamese or Thai or some of the other languages. Um, occasionally, we do get uh, someone who has that and we will use it. The, the organizations love it when that happens, but we're not expecting it. So, Any other questions from anyone? Looks like we don't have any questions coming in, but that's fine, guys. And what you might find is that, um, you know, there's a lot to process here. We uh, had to speak quickly to get it into this half hour. We know that nobody wants to be um, a long time on, on 
you know, online on Zoom all the time. So um, hopefully you were able to um, get what you needed from this information. Um, but if you think of anything else, um, once we log off here, then please do drop us an email. Um, so as you can see there, info at uh, kayavolunteer.com is our um, our email address and we can answer that uh, or reach out to us if you have any questions at all we absolutely love to be able to um, uh, to support you as you you know think about the options uh, to take part in an internship so with that we will let you go and um, yeah we hope to hear from you all again and we hope that uh, we see you traveling the world virtually or in person very soon thank you very much <laughs>